Turkey's HDP party has emerged as a popular option for the country's marginalized Kurds. But given a failing peace process, it has also become a target for political purges. With violence continuing in Turkey's Kurdish southeast, I sat down with Garo Pehlan, an HDP member of parliament. To establish a peace process is very hard because in Tur Turkish people are educated in a very nationalist way and they, they have a fear of the dividing of the country and they, the, the status quo always puts this fear on the table that Turkey, they are going to divide our country. But decentralization doesn't mean to div divide the country, as you know, as a, you know uh, to be a member of America, United States or U Europe. And we just ask for decentralization, decentralization because the, in the Arab let's say, the majority are the Kurds, or, or in the Black Sea region, or in the Aegean sea region. There are different realities, different majorities and minorities. So Turkey is a big country and eight, well, have an 18 million population. But Erdogan wants to rule the country at Ankara. It is. It, it doesn't work. Now, if you only want to rule the country from Ankara with one man's ideals, if you say everybody is a Turk, the Kurds are going to resist and for this and give this struggle that, that they always lived. And with that, they are just raising the nationalist policies and people are resisting. So we have, that we, our goal is to break this vicious, vicious circle. Uh, but unfortunately, we have no media. They shut down the last televisions that we had. So he is using all the media just to blame HTP, and he is just going with, on with this policy. What is happening in places like Diyarbakir? What is the what is the military or what is the Turkish government doing in the Turkish regions when it does these offensives? Um, in uh, you know, in Diyarbakir or Mardin, uh, HTP got the votes of 60%, 70%, 80%, even in Shirnak, Hakkari, 90% of the votes. And those were votes were, were for peace, not for war, of course. They just, uh, uh, they just took the idea of pluralism, diversity, and democracy. They asked for local governments, local governments to have more power. We were on the way to that. AKP was also pro decentralization. Uh, but, as I said, Tayyip Erdogan has a new coalition with the status quo. And that status quo centralized the power. He just um, appointed governors instead of our chosen mayors with 70%, 80%, 90% of the vote. This means we, we don't accept. Uh, your choice, so I'm going to rule Mardin or Diyarbakir from Ankara. This means that. And the, of course, PKK or the Kurdish people resisted, gave us gave a struggle against this idol. And the response was very harsh. He just bombed the cities. He just, that we don't have a sur. The center of Diyarbakir is a sur. We don't have a sur anymore. Sur is a historic place of Diyarbakir, where used to uh, Armenians live. I am an Armenian. Armenians used to live at the center of Diyarbakir. And we have you no know, hi history. We have dreams. We have uh, our mind. In, we have our churches there. We have our houses there. And they are all demolished. We don't have a sewer there. And so uh, they demolished all the sewer and other Kurdish towns. So uh, the state ideology and Tayyip Erdogan's policy is very harsh and they are putting a pressure, pressure on the Kurdish people and they are resisting and unfortunately, as I said, this vicious circle is going on again. How, when this is happening in your home regions, how can you possibly work with the government in Ankara? Is it impossible? Yeah, they are blaming us to support PKK. And they say, you are also terrorists. That is the word they are saying. But we say, as a politician, we can solve our problems at the parliament. And to, we, we ask them, Erdogan asks for pre pre presidency, presidency system. And we ask for local democracy. 
And if you just centralize the power, there will be no democracy at all. They just lifted our immunities. Anytime they can put all our deputies in the jail. That's the point. Because there is no rule of law, they are just controlling the you know, judiciary. And anytime they can put all our deputies in the you know, prison. This is going to mean that to the Kurdish people, especially who gave their water to us, you are not the member of this country. And they will just give more struggle. This is the vicious circle, as I said. With the lifting of the immunity, are you afraid to speak your mind? We have 59 uh, deputies in the parliament. All of us has no fear because every day we have 30 or 40 dead bodies in our hands who are mostly the young people. And with that, we have to give the struggle against this fascist uh, uh, ideology. All we don't right. have this fear, that, that, that's what I, I can say, but we need, need support coming from the West and, or, or wherever uh, people are Democrats. Do you think, uh, for example, the, the West is generally thought to support Kurds in Syria. Do you think the West has done enough to support Kurds in Turkey? No, but it is not about, all about Kurds. The West has a blind eye on the human rights violations in Turkey or all over the Middle East. They just think that we just supported the Democrats uh, and now we have ISIS in our hands and Turkey is not a stable country, Syria is not stable, Iraq is not stable. So let's go back to dictators. And he, they are ready to play with Assad. They have no, no. Uh, uh, they they are playing with Sisi in Egypt, and they want to play with Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the dictator in Turkey.